I would yes. underline the importance of capacity building. I always see that um, working also a bit with startups in my previous work uh, under EIT Climate Cake and trying to build these ecosystems in especially Central Eastern Europe, I could see how big uh, benefit is to create this kind of programs uh, full of peer-to-peer -peer learning, uh, connecting the people, learning from each other, understand how to build a business, uh, what tools I need, even the basic thing, how to present my business model in an understandable way, convincing way, you know, have those jury like trial trial uh, presentations that they can train themselves how to how to sell the idea and it helped them also to build up and, and build partnerships and, and feel a bit not alone, like feeling the confidence of understanding that there are others who want to go the same way. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely could underline the importance of networking, having this kind of trial events, educa educative events, where they can really, you know, try how to how to attract and understand their own business and business model better and improve. Um, Christian, I have another country because time, uh, another question because time is running. Um, um, yeah, what what you see as a potential uh, for you for international collaboration? Would you be personally interested in investing into a startup uh, abroad? And I said, what actually actually would be the the points, the incentives you would like to hear from a startup to convince you to invest in? Yeah. Um, First of all, um, I think I have some, um, maybe it's a personal blend, but I've got some different semantics when I talk about um, startup businesses because my view of a startup is a company or a team that wants to found a company that will scale and will scale fast and will scale big. This is startup and founders. And um, my impression is, from what I learned uh, now um, from the programs that you support, it is more about entrepreneurship and giving people um, opportunities to build businesses. So this is maybe um, a matter of perspective that is different. Plus, with the professional investors, they have high internal cost with all the lawyers and all these people that have um, six-digit and seven-digit salary um, checks a year and want incentive for good investments. Hence, they need to invest in something where the hour spent will create a lot of money for the investor. So the traditional venture capital investor is only looking at high returns and um, larger so-called tickets, investments, in order to get high returns and even more money back. So with these um, more local, smaller uh, entrepreneurial startups, um, it is a matter of finding different uh, ways of funding. And um, there is um, impact investors. This is a different kind of investor because these are people who don't care primarily about the returns. Also, these impact companies have different cost structures and very often they get their funds from um, different sources that are not looking at the two-digit um, return but that are also happy with the one-digit return and doing something good while creating returns. So um, th this is um, some scene setting I'm doing now. Um, when it comes to investments in Africa, I know that, for example, Rocket Internet, the um, company builder by the Samba brothers who uh, founded um, the precursor of eBay, Alando Beck, uh, in the 1990s, they have invested uh, also in Africa with business models um, that work, for example, in the West. But also their approach is obviously have a team with few people and scale it fast. So um, to have the impact on society, it is probably the impact investor and state money and crowdfinancing and other initiatives that will um, provide the funds. But the classic venture capitalist, um, the Y Combinators, uh, and Andresen Horowitzes uh, of, this, of the world, um, would probably um, not invest in a small farmer, even though I know, for example, your example with the drones, 
is, is very attractive for the impact and would be a scalable business. I also know another business, also with drones, where they deliver um, blood samples and uh, medicine. This is absolutely high tech. They have a catapult and um, this is actually an American startup that operates in Africa. But again, this is high tech, this was expensive, but this is also a locally driven initiative. But um, generally speaking, I think um, there's some um, way to go in order to really collaborate. I personally see a lot of potential in Africa, also because um, of the lack of legacy. You mentioned the lack of regulation. Um, I would add legacy because um, they have different infrastructure. For example, very often um, in African, country, African countries, there is no infrastructure that is expensive to maintain. So they are mobile first and also they will um, start maybe with decentralized energy because there's a lot of sun, so you can harvest the uh, temperature and you can also harvest um, the radiation and produce um, electricity. So you have got power and you've got um, temperature which you can use in a decentral way. And this is a chance that is probably uh, an opportunity that is probably completely overlooked. At least I haven't seen it in the bubbles I'm following. And there's many examples where the specifics of the um, African continent um, will provide to making our lives better. Impact investors is precisely what Africa needs. Because if you see the, the business cases or you know the, the money that is needed, it's you know compared to um, what normally venture capital spends, it's so small. Uh, we're talking probably sometimes ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, and that's a general problem when we talk about climate finance. That mm -hmm. very often the, the money needed for to find uh, a solution for a local problem is so low. People cannot even apply for a grant because it starts with millions. Yeah, mm. that's also a problem for the for the Green Climate Fund. Um, but but that is precisely, and I understand. I mean, we all know that at the end of the day, if you if you treat a proposal or you know have a, a startup on the table that is, is, is pitching for ten million or ten thousand, the work is the same. So you know, if you have an idea of fifty thousand, you say, should I really you know uh, take the time to go through this and really because it's, it's so little money and obviously the, the return is so low, so it doesn't really make sense. But, but I, I would really wish that this um, segment of, of impact investment grows in the future or probably you know, this idea of um, philanthropic money, because I think very often that is where the impact investment is coming from, will grow or that you know, venture capital firms say, okay, we're dedicating now 5% of our revenues to purely impact investment, where we probably also have kind of a component, you know, we hire people that go there and offer services for free um, to those startups, because it's really local problems that mm. need local solutions sometimes. And, and I think what, I mean, the, the drone technology is one thing, but another example to, you know, to really demonstrate how, um, how little investment you need is, is another startup, I think from Nigeria, it's called Rent a Tractor. So rent a tractor basically operates on the idea that farmers don't have the technology, um, you know, to to harvest, uh, to grow the seeds. But of course, they cannot afford a tractor, so they can rent it by hour, yeah, for very little money, um, and that's the business model. Mm -hmm. But of course, the startup needs to buy two or three tractors in the first place, which in African context is is incredibly a lot of money, and they can't afford it. Um, but I mean, grow a tractor or rent a tractor is is getting bigger now, and and you know they, they have, you know, I think overcome this valley of death. So so they are they are operational. Um, but this is just also an idea, or you know, that really demonstrates that the solutions need to come from African countries. Because I doubt that anyone, uh, you know, in Europe would sit. How can we have African, you know, farmers? Ah, let's, you know, they should rent tractors. It's really something that comes from the ground, and I think that's what also is really important to, to stress um, that, that the solution or the idea needs to come from African countries that we can't sit here and, and you know, develop ideas uh, how, we can, how we can support. Uh, I've got one addition um, because of the challenge that taking um, 
investment analysis to a more cost efficient way this could be done by artificial intelligence uh, in the future it could be rule based yeah. you don't need ai for everything uh, it's a buzzword but um, with what i've seen now about the hype chat gpt and uh, all the other um, ai models uh, or large language models um, that are out there um, I can see that um, there's a different way of interacting which is easier for the people applying so they don't have to fill out a business model canvas and deliver a business plan but maybe they can even in their local language explain what they're doing and then they can uh, artificial intelligence will create a business plan and a business model canvas and then the artificial intelligence can maybe decide or just uh, give the decision document to um, a gatekeeper human investor. And this will take out a lot of the um, barriers there from the um, entrepreneurs and startup founders applying um, from the process and free a lot of capacity um, for small ticket investments. I haven't checked whether this exists, but I think um, it should exist. Interesting. Uh, interesting idea coming up uh, during talking about innovative innovation startups, so innovation within innovation. Uh, thank you. Uh, time is running. Um, let's skip a bit uh, to a bit broader topic. Uh, the conference uh, you are attending, and myself as well, is focused on Green Deal and energy transition. Uh, be more precise about just energy transition. Uh, I would like maybe, Anya, if you could a bit further elaborate on African perspective on how they see this EU Green Deal and this uh, how they understand this just transition. Uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that there's really so much discussion about the Green mm. Deal going on. I mean, probably on a very high level. Um, let's say the ordinary citizen is not, is not aware of that. It's not such a big buzz as it is in Europe. Um, and now the reactions to the Green Deal, I think, are mixed. I think in generally it's, it's welcome that, that Europe uh, is committing to more climate change, but there's also some level of skepticism what it will mean for the African countries. Um, you know, will it, uh, will it be beneficial or, you know, will it create another burden? For, for national industries on the continent. And I think that is really something that we have to learn. Um, we have a very European-centered uh, things way of, of seeing things. Uh, we need to decarbonize, we need to transform our industries. African countries don't need to decarbonize because there's nothing they can decarbonize. Some of the countries have negative emissions. Mm. If you take South Africa apart, There's basically, you know, with South Africa, I think that African countries are responsible for less than 5% of the global emissions. If you take uh, South Africa out, I don't know how much is left, 2%. So why does the world need to decarbonize? Um, that's a, a very legitimate question a lot of African countries are asking. If at the same time they don't have any industry to feed the people, to give jobs employment opportunities and, and we tend to see it from a very European centered way and say of course we need to decarbonize but, but how can we find a way for African countries to prosper without making the same mistakes that we did because very often it's, it's perceived as you have developed, you're rich and now you're basically telling us you can't have your piece of the cake uh, you need to stay where you are because if you're emitting more then you know the world will basically implode And that is that is very often the perception. Um, so I think this, this dialogue needs to be more pragmatic. Um, we, as the industrialized countries, have the obligation to decarbonize and, to be quite frankly, do it faster as we are now and not always find excuses why the future doesn't start tomorrow but only in five years um, because this is also perceived very well on the African continent. Um, And, and at the same time, try to find solutions that are viable economically, ecologically, and sociable for African countries to grow their industries, but do it in the most um, climate-friendly way possible. And that might not be the net zero way, um, but you know, 
creating significantly less emissions than, than in this moment. And, and I think there's an opportunity, but it's also a danger if, if you don't get that narrative right. And especially, I mean, the Green Deal was one thing, now we have CBAM, um, you know, some African countries are uh, very afraid that they have one or two industries. Um, some countries are, you know, trading w with Europe and they have one trading partner, they have one good, and, and they depend so much on that good. And if now you put a, a tariff on that specific good, they're done. Now, we can probably not imagine, because we have normally very diversified portfolios, um, when we say we have trading partners, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know, within the European Union, but, but some of th some of these trading relations that African countries have with one specific country in Europe or with the European Union, they really rely on that. Mm. And, and they're very afraid that CBAM will create another barrier for them. So we really have to think when, you know, CBAM will be introduced, how can we address those fears? How can we support African countries in you know, creating systems and, and not making um, the industries that they have, uh, you know, the kind of the scapegoat and uh, the disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is that is that is very, very important and, and it needs to happen soon. And and I hope there will come some, you know, some solutions from the European Union to address these problems soon. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Anya. And I, I would also here underline the importance of always looking in the things from a bit broader perspective and sometimes jump out, out of our bubble, especially the EU Brussels bubble and understand the impact of what our own EU centric strategies could have uh, on other countries and find the time to explain, to set a dialogue and discuss and listen to such perspectives from other countries and then maybe reshape the polit policies that it's in a global good way. Um, yeah, so uh, Christian, and to you, um, Green Deal. When I say this word, what, what, what comes up in your mind? What do you see under this kind of uh, term? Do you already see, uh, or is the impact of a Green Deal baked here in the EU already also? Can you feel it in your daily life uh, or in your business life? Uh, as we spoke about uh, green startups, I understand you, you underlined a lot um, the importance of energy efficiency and make the business really like green. So here I, I see that you already reflect the goals of, of uh, EU countries uh, towards you know sustainable future and green future and energy transition. So you are very much focused on this energy efficiency element or are there other elements from the Green Deal you feel like you, you would like to take with uh, uh, into your own business? I think generally um, the Green Deal is um, a good opportunity to reset to some extent the way how we live, how we do business and how we organize our lives. Um, I know there's a bubble somewhere in the internet uh, that speaks about the Great Reset and that this is um, some plan to, or, uh, to, to make poor people even poorer and rich people Richard, but uh, I think um, there's an opportunity in um, transforming the way we live. And I also see, um, because we're now um, very much focusing on how North and South can um, collaborate in this discussion, that the South can also help um, the North to um, achieve the targets. For example, uh, Paul von Son, who uh, used to have uh, leadership roles in Desert Tech industrial initiatives, used to be one of the managers I worked for uh, back in the energy industry, was already decades, now we can say decades ago, working on an idea that um, in sub-Saharan Africa, the um, energy of the sun can be harvested and transported into Europe in order to decarbonize. This is obviously um, a capital intensive, not a labor intensive, and more a high-tech project, but still it is an opportunity. And also we spoke today in the conference um, about the plans in Namibia for um, hydrogen uh, production. This is also a big opportunity to actually take 
the advantages the South has in order to um, ameliorate um, the effects our disadvantages in Europe have has um, because it was coal um, and still is coal for producing steel and um, we don't need to talk about the negative effects of firing coal that's is, is just clear so I see that um, the Green Deal actually has an effect that is positive not only on Europe but also on um, other regions of the world But I also see that there's challenges um, for the people um, in Europe that don't understand the implications um, on their lives, that see prices increasing, and um, also there's a lot of discussions about um, the way we should transition the energy um, situation. But coming back to startups, this was your initial question, but I think it is important to look at the wider scene before looking at startups um, because there's such a large number of different types of startups and industries. Um, I think um, in the startup uh, landscape, there's opportunities, for example, also in just applying what is there, but applying it uh, there in terms of technologies and ideas and applying it in a more um, useful way. For example, I've heard in a podcast that in Frankfurt only the excess heat of uh, server farms would allow for 30% of the heat need in the city of Frankfurt. Obviously, you have to collect the energy, uh, the, the heat and you have to bring the heat to houses or you can store heat. There's many ways, like there's aquifers and uh, different ways how you can conserve heat and also con uh, transfer heat into electricity and the other way around. And to organize this in an efficient way is a big opportunity for startups because um, everything that speeds the transformation of the energy system is very helpful for the planet. Another example is, um, which is also more about scaling existing technologies, is geothermal energy. Um, there's regions like in Bavaria or around the Rhine where you can um, create um, a lot of uh, energy from uh, geothermal power and I read I think in Capital uh, last week that 30% of the German um, heat requirement can actually be catered for with geothermal energy but we've got um, very little knowledge where to actually drill We've got very little equipment for drilling, so we need um, good um, algorithms and engineers that identify the good locations and focus on the good locations to drill and use the uh, drilling equipment there in order to speed the transition. So this is um, not the traditional startup opportunity, but there is an opportunity for startups. Thank you, Christian. Time is running. I think we need to end our discussion. We could discuss hours about startups, conditions for startups. And uh, Anya, yes, last word and comments for, from your side. Yes, so just a good, uh, good idea on, on uh, north-south learning. Uh, geothermal energy is already exploited heavily in Kenya. Uh, it makes a lot, it's uh, what, 20-30% of the, of the energy mix. The Kenyan government wants to bring it up to 40% in, in 10 years. It's the main uh, source of, of renewable energy in the electricity mix already. Um, and there is actually um, a startup, for instance, that, that one uh, from, from Europe that is going to um, uh, have its production site at a geothermal uh, source because very cheap energy. And it's a carbon capture storage technology they're using. So maybe Germany can learn from Kenya how to how to exploit geothermal energy better, and and uh, and that would be a good good cooperation, I think. <laughs>